It's a funny thing how certain games seem to have become synonymous with a specific hardware platform, despite appearing on several different ones. And Jetpack, by British developers Ultimate Play the Game, who would later go on to be known as Rare, serves as a perfect example. First released in 1983, the game saw release on several home computer formats, including the Commodore VIC-20 and BBC Micro. But for some reason, Jetpack seems to endure in the memories of many retro enthusiasts as an iconic ZX Spectrum game. And funnily enough, it's the Spectrum version of it that's included in Rare Replay, an Xbox One exclusive collection of some 30 games drawn from the illustrious developer's back catalogue. As a curated collection of Rare's output over the years, Rare Replay really does feature an interesting mix of stuff. There are plenty of games that make perfect sense to include on an Xbox One exclusive collection, such as Xbox 360 versions of notable N64 hits, like Banjo-Kazooie and Perfect Dark, and even Grabbed by the Ghoulies, their original Xbox exclusive from 2003. But besides those, we get a selection of quality NES games, like Snake Rattle and Roll, RC Pro-Am and Solar Jetman. And then we get the ZX Spectrum games. There's something really amusing about playing the likes of Jetpack, Attic Attack, Saber Wolf and Night Law on an Xbox One. I mean, talk about punching below your weight. The console probably has to work harder to display the collection's menu screens than it does to run any of these. But my intention isn't to poke fun. A game is a game after all, and if you're of a mind to pick up Rare Replay, my guess is that it's because you want to revisit some of the games the developer's mighty reputation was built on. Then again, if you pick it up for the more modern offerings in the collection, you shouldn't write these older ones off as filler, because they represent some of the very best gaming you could experience on home computers back in the day, and all without the heartbreak of tape loading errors. Jetpack's gameplay is brilliantly simple. In each stage, playing as an astronaut equipped with, get this, a jetpack, you have to navigate floating platforms to retrieve the component parts of a rocket ship before returning them to the bottom right of the play area. Once it's assembled, you then need to collect several fuel pods and take them back to the rocket before you can blast off in it and move to the next stage but the entire process is made more complicated by waves of attacking aliens that you need to fend off with your laser. Occasionally, bonus items will appear in the play area that you can pick up for extra points. However, this introduces an element of risk into the game. Enemies move quickly and in considerable numbers, so the trick to playing the game is to weigh up at any given moment whether you can safely reach an item and return it to your rocket if needs be without colliding with the enemy which will cost you one of your lives. It's simple, but quite fast moving stuff. The question is, does playing Jetpack on a console that's ludicrously overpowered to run it give you anything over the experience of playing it on a 48K Spectrum? And the answer is, not really. Granted, you don't have to put up with the ear-splitting shriek of cassette loading noise every time you want to play it and you get to use the Xbox One's glorious controller instead of fighting with keyboard controls or a plasticky joystick. Visuals are obviously pin sharp as well, thanks to the magic of high definition video output. But if you feel the need to recreate the look of playing on a blown out CRT television, Rare Replay offers you a retro display option to do just that. Don't use it though, because it's horrible. I mean, can you imagine playing the game like this for more than a few minutes? I'll never understand why developers sink time and energy into this kind of feature. Scanline filters are one thing, but this? I reckon it must have taken longer to make than anyone will ever actually use it for in-game. Dubious presentation decisions aside though, this is a really tidy, straight-ahead recreation of Jetpack. It's not entirely accurate to the ZX Spectrum version, as I notice a change in the on-screen typeface, something I see Rare tinkered with in other games from this end of the collection as well. But it's hardly worth getting hung up over. When it comes to what really matters, 
the guts of the game itself, everything is pretty much how it should be. Even the Spectrum's signature colour clash and the original game sprite flicker is preserved, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Some obvious downsides to Jetpack are that it's the kind of game that sees you doing the same thing over and over, and the actual layout from one stage to the next never changes. The platforms are always in the exact same places. But it's never boring. In fact, this is one of those games that does a really good job of keeping the player on their toes. What's actually kind of impressive is that the enemy behaviour is really quite varied. They don't just look different in each stage, but they act differently too, and this makes later stages quite challenging. Early on, after you've assembled and fueled your rocket, there's nothing to stop you from staying in each stage to zap enemies and stack pickups, because they only end after you steer your astronaut into the ship. Delay doing that, and you can blast away to your heart's content to rack up points and high scores. You'll still need to be alert though, because the game does like to put you in the odd inescapable situation, resulting in some occasionally cheap deaths. And the further you cut into Jetpack, the more manic it gets. Later stages can become a real scramble to get the job done. But that's all part of the fun. There's just one minor hiccup I noticed, which I don't recall ever being a problem playing the ZX Spectrum version all those years ago. It's not something that happens at all frequently, but every once in a while, control inputs will register incorrectly. And when this happens, it's pretty disconcerting. I didn't find it a deal breaker, if I'm honest, because it's such a rare occurrence. But it could be enough of a problem for some folks that it makes the prospect of playing Jetpack on a console just a bit less appealing than, by rights, it should be. It all depends on how much of a stickler you are, I guess. Just be aware that, infrequent as it may be, it is an issue. What made Jetpack remarkable back in 1983 was that it expertly recreated the kind of immediately accessible gameplay you'd expect to find in arcades in a package you could enjoy on your home computer. And I appreciate that, in the present day, that might not sound like much of a recommendation. But really, it's because the game was built with that aspiration in mind that it still works so well. What you see here on screen is exactly what you get with Jetpack. It's a fun, straight ahead kind of game that you can jump straight into, and plays intuitively thanks to its simple design. As with a lot of games of its time, I don't think it's one to play for hours on end in a single session, but if you need any proof of its enduring appeal, it's worth bearing in mind that Rare themselves would dust off this basic gameplay template again in 2007 for Jetpack Refueled, an updated version of the game which is also included in Rare Replay but annoyingly, that requires a persistent internet connection to play. I should mention that details like that disqualify games from ever being featured on this show. Because it's my show, I make the rules, and I think having to be permanently connected online just to play even a single player game is a frankly ridiculous requirement. The good news though is that if such things irk you as much as they do me, you won't really be missing anything by skipping the remake because when you hold it up against the original, there really isn't much between them on a nuts and bolts level. You don't need a Bells and Whistles remake of Jetpack, to be honest, because the 1983 original, as represented here, does everything you could possibly need it to. It's still as much fun now as it ever was, and that, to me, is the sign of a solid game.